Hi, I'm Millie. My husband, Jonty, and I, along with our two kids, Milo and Aspen, moved to Singapore from the UK in the middle of 2020, during the height of the global pandemic. Singapore ranks as the 20th smallest country in the world, and we are enjoying exploring every kilometre of it, finding the extraordinary wonders in our everyday lives. Welcome to Wonderland. the other day and came back on the bus coming to Pai Labour and we saw a hawker centre on the bus at Cave Road so we decided to come back and check it out. Milo is waiting patiently with me while Jonty and Aspen have gone to go and find their food. Hey look, matching spoon and dress. to the Marina Bay and then we need to change line to red line and go to Marina South Pier. We are at Marina South Pier. We've never been here before. We think that it might be the place where you go to get the ferries to the islands like Lazarus and St John's. Kusu Island, we'll find out all about that in the new year, I think. Um, but we've never been here before, it looks massive. It's like a big old airport, but I guess like a ferry terminal. Um, and there's some little knick-knack shops around the place. Um, and we're gonna go have an explore and see if we can find the gallery. The robot behind me tells you how um, hot it is, and but not cold, because it's obviously not cold in Singapore. But if you're watching in England, it's probably cold in there. But it's 28 degrees. Yes. So to get into the Singapore Maritime Museum, it's actually free entry, which is brilliant. Um, Uncle Weapon today gave us loads of information about all the different exhibits they've got here, and there's a little children's book, which actually isn't just for use in here. You can go to lots of different places over Singapore. There's a list inside. You can go to all of those places, do different activities, and then once you've completed it, you get a little prize at the end. I think the kids get a sticker today when they've done it. So we're going to use that to kind of keep the kids' interest. There is a lot of reading here, which is going to be really interesting, but sometimes not so much for them. So it's really nice that there's something for them to do as we're going around and looking at all the different things. Back in the 1300s, when people traded, when they sold things to other countries, there'd be in baskets like this. In the 18 to the 18, 19 to 1860s, it was in one of these. These days, you get those big ones, but these all the big ones across the way. Okay? We were a bit confused because we were looking at all these five lighthouses that are supposed to be Singapore Authority owned or run lighthouses and we couldn't find the Rackles Marina Lighthouse, the one that we've seen, the one that we've been to, which is far west where we stayed at, um, there's, a, there's a hotel club there that we stayed at. And uh, we asked a guy who worked here, Uncle Richard, and he was just saying how it's not actually run by Singapore, it's a private lighthouse. These five are run by Singapore and the other one's just used for the people who, private users of, of the marina over there. I made my own Raffles Lighthouse. I really enjoy coming to museums to see all the old photos and to see how things were and how things are now and what's changed over time and what's led those changes over time, I guess. And it does seem that Singapore changes really fast and looking at all of this, it has. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it changes. I'm glad that Singapore still keeps lots of nature spots. I think that's really important and the heritage at like the hawker centers and things like that. I hope things like that never change, but things do have to move and change. So it's really good for me to kind of come and see what Singapore used to look like really not that long ago. Singapore is actually made up of 64 islands and just behind me it's telling me that some of the islands are being used for other ports, for storing, for boats to kind of drop things off, come in and out and Singapore when it kind of runs out of land almost they just reclaim more land which I think is amazing so the country um, the land mass is actually a lot bigger than it used to be because Singapore just kind of makes more land which I think is really clever and it's just something that not really heard of because Singapore is actually very very small like we can fit the whole of Singapore in the small county where we used to live in the UK so I find that just fascinating. We're inside an actual container and if you're not very good at telling how big it actually is if you're not very good at telling how big it is, you can fit about 48,000 bananas in here. <laughs> <laughs> so 
There's interactive TV displays, like iPads that you can kind of touch and figure things out. There's models. And I like that it kind of describes the behind the scenes of the Singapore shipping port. So we've explored the history and now it's kind of telling you the modern day, how things actually work, the day to day, behind the scenes, that kind of get everything's working. Like this particular boat is um, it's used to cut through ice to go through Russia, which, you know, I just thought you could know, put things on a boat, it travels across, our shipping came across the boat, but things like that, that kind of, I hadn't really thought about before how it all works. So it's nice that when I see this, actually, that um, I'll know the whole the behind the scenes of how it goes. One of the things they've got here is a um, driving simulator. It's quite weird, it kind of goes all the way around you. Um, it kind of makes you feel like you're actually on a boat. I'm quite prone to like travel sickness and motion sickness. And it makes you feel like you're actually on the boat. Um, it gives you a little like task to find a boat that's on fire, ours is, but I, I think it's probably sunk by now already. Um, we haven't managed to find it yet. Even with a bit of teamwork, we're not there yet. Oh no. Time. I've jumped ship. The uh, simulator was making me feel a little bit queasy, even though it's not a real boat. So yeah, I've jumped ship and um, I'm going to go and see what's out one of the windows instead. There's a whole kids area here as well. It's got lots of other little activities to do. There's some origami. There's another booklet that I picked up that kind of goes through the museum as well make it a bit more kid friendly and interactive for them which is great especially in a place that's free entry like in the UK you don't find a lot of places with free entry and activities to do for kids we were National Trust members and you pay a yearly membership and um, they do have often lots of free activities that you can do there but I find in Singapore there's way more to do as a family um, and free things as well which is brilliant so there's little activities here that you can do origami is one of them so we're gonna have a try at making something there's you can learn to tie knots and it's all boat related obviously being in a maritime museum so yeah we've got this little bit to ourselves right now so we're gonna try out some of the activities they don't really work I uh, yeah <laughs> maybe I'm still feeling a bit seasick from that simulator but uh, this is not a boat never mind I'm gonna see what the kids are up to. I'm laughing to myself because I just opened the curtain and got a fright because I thought someone was stood there but it's a cardboard cutout but it <laughs> creeped me out. Creepy. their little booklet pages while they were here and you get a sticker to complete it. We're going to keep the books because there's lots of different places we can go to. Johnny and I finished the little survey that they asked you to do and um, got one of these little tags each so the kids can put it on their bag. But when we can go traveling, uh, we're hopefully planning to go to some of the St. John's, Kusu or Sisters Island soon so we can use this on one of their bags. We just wrapped up in there and it was a really lovely time and we've just spotted that it's suddenly really, really busy here. We think that a ship must have just come in or a ferry just come in from one of the neighboring islands and some people must have had a good time there. Um, but it's really nice to see this place a bit busier with some people around it too. We're um, just gonna go have a little wander around the area and um, just explore before we head back. Right next to the um, ferry terminal and the MRT station actually, you can't go any further, the next step is uh, over the sea by a boat. There's a nice big patch of green grass and you can just sit out here hearing the waves, hearing the boats, watching uh, everything go by. It's like a really nice spot to just sit and watch the world go by. Really enjoying being out here. There's a cool breeze which is nice. Aspen is also having a little flying lesson because there are no drone restrictions here so we're enjoying just chilling out after going around the museum. <laughs> 